A few weeks ago, Microsoft announced that they were buying Activision Blizzard. Immediately, I put out a video. Well, the day after. I gave myself time to ruminate on all of the information, read through all of the interviews that had come out, and try and make a bit of an informed decision on what was happening with that particular scenario. Exactly two weeks after that announcement, Sony bought Bungie, and I didn't make a video. That's because my household got COVID, including myself, and it wasn't going to be pretty to put on camera, either how I looked or how I sounded. But I'm better now. So let's talk Sony buying Bungie. The first thing I want to do is clear up any biases. I'm primarily a PlayStation gamer. I have a PlayStation 4 Pro and a PlayStation 5 both hooked up to my living room television. All of my other services are cloud-based or in one of the secondary or tertiary screens in the house. So PlayStation is the primary place that I play. Atop of that, I'm a huge Destiny fan. I've put over 270 full days into the Destiny franchise since its launch in 2014. So it feels like there's should be some sort of bias here, but that's not how I took this. Because when this acquisition was announced, it wasn't like the Microsoft one. We're buying an entire publishing house. We're buying Activision Blizzard. That comes with so many different developers, including the likes of Arcane Studios, who've made the Dishonored and Deathloop games previously, and the likes of Treyarch, who've made the Call of Duty games and so on. It wasn't a case of, we're losing so many different franchises to go single platform. It's, we're losing one to go single platform. That feels much more palatable. But that's only if you didn't read either of the announcements from Sony or Bungie. There was a much different messaging than what came across in the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition. Theirs is still very muddy a month after it was announced. Very muddy. Some things are going to be multi-platform, some things aren't. What those things are, we'll only know in due time. Is Bobby Kotick still going to be there? We don't know. There is a lot of unknowns in the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. But in the Sony Bungie deal, probably 80 to 90% of the customer facing consequences were addressed on the day that the acquisition was announced. Platform exclusivity. Look, when a platform maker acquires a developer, whether that be a single studio or a publishing house, they are doing so because it's going to benefit them in one way, shape or form. That is exactly the same with this acquisition of Bungie by Sony, by PlayStation. But they're not making the games platform exclusive. Destiny will not become a PlayStation only game. Destiny will not get PlayStation only guns or strikes or what we've had in the past with a partnership with Bungie. This acquisition seems to have been drawn up so that Bungie maintain their independence, but they get better funding and they get more staff, more support from additional studios outside of their own, and they can support additional studios should they need it within the PlayStation Studios umbrella. It seems like a very positive working relationship. And the fact that they've announced that not just Destiny, but all future IPs that they are going to make will be multi-platform, that's a very different messaging than what we received from the previous acquisition two weeks earlier. It's a positive message, I like the message, and it shows a changing in the video game industry that this platform exclusivity, it's got a time limit on it. But then comes the question, what's in this for Bungie and Sony? Like Microsoft, Sony doesn't just deal in video games. Where Microsoft has got its hardware division for the Surface devices, and it's got its software division for Windows and the like, Sony have their fingers in many different markets. The 
camera sensor that is filming this video currently is made by Sony. The screen that I game on downstairs is made by Sony. The last movie that I watched was made by Sony. They have audio equipment, visual equipment. They have studios for TV and film. Sony have got their fingers in many different pies and Bungie want to spread the Destiny universe beyond video games. They want comics, they want TV shows, and they want movies about Destiny. Sony offers them the opportunity to do that with in-house tools and teams, like we're seeing with Spider-Man and Uncharted. The Last of Us is getting a TV show funded and helmed by Sony. And it's got the writers of the original game on board for the TV show. That is what the Sony Bungie acquisition offers to each party. It's more than just video games that this is all about. It's about multimedia platforms. And that's quite big for both parties. When I read the interviews, the two CEOs from Bungie and well, Sony and Bungie respectively. When I read their interviews, their statement pieces and what have you, it very much struck me that they got everything figured out. It very much struck me that they knew what they wanted from this partnership and they'd all signed on the dotted line. They addressed things about the legacy abuse within the Bungie team. And Sony said, we can see that they've already been acting on this, but we will be keeping this under a microscope and we will not hesitate to kick them out the door if needs be, or come in and put leadership in if we think it's required. Bungie accepted those statements, saying we need to change, we need to do better. It seems like a very positive move. Sony, back in 2019, said they wanted more than just the single player games. They love their single player games, they will not abandon their single player games. God of War is still one of their best selling games of all time and it's just had a resurgence when released on PC. We've got Horizon Forbidden West in a few days at the time of recording this and the hype around that game is unbelievable. The way it's running on a base PS4, I can't wait to get my hands on it on a PlayStation 5. We've got Spider-Man 2 upcoming in 2023, and in 2024 we've got a Wolverine game. We've got indies like Stray upcoming that I personally can't wait to get my hands on, and many, many more experiences, all within that single-player realm. But Sony don't have any developer right now putting feelers and games and experiences out in the multiplayer world, in persistent game worlds. And they can't build that from scratch easily. But they've just pulled on board the developer that's been doing this since 2014 and one of the only ones that's been doing this successfully since 2014. Yes, they've had their stumbles along the way. The first year of Destiny, the first year of Destiny 2, both had their issues. But both have become super strong, incredibly good games. The Witch Queen, the latest expansion to Destiny 2 launching on the 22nd of February, already has over a million pre-orders. That's pre-orders. That's not including new people picking the game up, somebody loading Stadia on their phone today for the first time and seeing that Destiny 2 can be played for free. That's not including any of these new guys. That's not including people coming back when their friends start playing. And that's not including people who are seeing their friends playing, who've always thought the game is a bit near, and then suddenly like, this looks like fun playing together and look at picking it up. Like, this game is huge, absolutely massive, and the experience that Bungie bring in to PlayStation Studios now mean that Sony can start moving forward with that vision of multiplayer and persistent games much quicker than they would be able to do if they were trying to build those services from scratch. But is this a positive thing for the industry? One of the big things I called out about the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal was the monopolization of the industry. They've been able to splash $77 billion and purchase two of the biggest publishing houses from of third-party developers like Bethesda and like Activision Blizzard. Sony have bought Bungie. Prior to that, their last acquisition was Insomniac Games back in 2019, a company who have been 
releasing Sony exclusive titles since 1995. They weren't a PlayStation Studios team until 2019 after they'd launched Marvel Spider-Man on PS4. I don't know if this is good for the industry. There are major positive words to take from this. The lack of platform exclusivity is a big one. And the fact that that was mentioned right alongside the announcement of the acquisition, that's a huge, huge thing. Because it puts gamers at ease straight away. It allows them to accept this purchase much quicker. Insomniac was an easily acceptable purchase because they've always been making Sony exclusive titles. Activision Blizzard was not an acceptable purchase because they've always made multi-platform titles and the messaging around that acquisition was you might not get your favourite game where you currently play anymore. But this acquisition, the messaging was much better. Yes, they're a PlayStation Studios team. No, none of their stuff is going platform exclusive. And I think that's the big difference between the actors. Activision Blizzard acquisition and the Bungie acquisition that we've seen recently. The press around it, the messaging around it, and how well articulated some of the major pressing concerns are for the gamers. But the monopolization of the industry is still happening in front of our eyes. Jim Ryan said in those interviews that more acquisitions are coming from Sony this year whether that's a publishing house, additional studios, whether that's Stadia, because that's a big rumbling right now, and that's one that a lot of people say would do PlayStation good, buying out Stadia from Google. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But it's still more and more of the industry going into platform holders' hands. If this current trend of them, not them making those things platform exclusive continues, I don't foresee too much of a problem. There's still gonna to have to be that competition between developers to get customers to buy their games. And there's still gonna to have to be that increasing of innovation to keep these things fresh and win customers money. But we're gonna end up with just a couple or three players in the market. And when that happens, you end up with like platform wars like Android, iOS, where they end up mimicking one another until they may as well be the same thing. Diversity is required in any industry to keep it moving forward at a positive rate and keep customers happy. I just hope that what we're seeing with all of these acquisitions, with all of this monopolization of the industry, that we don't lose that innovation, we don't lose the diversity and variety that we currently have. I don't think that this Bungie acquisition is a bad thing. I think it's very good for Sony. I think it's very good for Bungie. I think it's good for Destiny players on Xbox, on PC, on Stadia, and anywhere else. I think it's really good for them because it's just giving more resources, money, and support to make the game that these people love. But the note of, we are not done. We are going to be buying more. There's more to announce this year. That feels a bit icky. And when Microsoft are saying the same thing, I fear for the future of the industry. So that's my thoughts on the Sony acquisition of Bungie. Very different type of video to the last one that I did on these. I've had a much longer time to react to this. A lot more news has come out about this one before I've been able to put a reaction out. And I actually think it's a really positive thing for the two parties involved. And when that happens, like things like the 1.2 billion fund that Sony have put forward to keep all of the staff, if that gets evenly distributed, you're talking over a million dollars per person working at the studio. And that's amazing. Obviously, it won't get divided that way. No corporation does divide things that way. Capitalism is king and all that. But even so, that's a massive fund to keep people at the studio, to keep the talent that's already there working there after the acquisition. Really positive move. The fact that they've announced the lack of platform exclusivity immediately. And the fact we've then seen, yeah, a big part of this deal is for movies and TV shows. This is why we signed on the dotted line. There's been news articles about that, interviews about that. 
My reaction is different this time because I've had more time with it and there's more news about it. I still have those same fears that I had when talking in the Microsoft video that I did. But at the same time, this is the world that we live in. The capitalist nature of the Western world means that people are going to look to grow, that competition means buying success a lot of the time. You look at Meta Company, Facebook as they were, and they bought Instagram because it was going to dominate Facebook, it was going to be better. So they bought Instagram, they bought WhatsApp because it was going to be better than Facebook. They just bought success. And they're one of the biggest tech companies on the planet now because they bought that success. It works within the world that we live in, in these Western democracies. So it's going to continue despite the fears that people like me and maybe you have. But all up, like I said with the Microsoft Activision Blizzard one, a big portion of these acquisitions will mean better treatment of staff, better remuneration of staff. When Insomniac can churn out four games in three years without crunch, without overtime and being paid well for the job that they're doing, all because Sony just turn around and say, will it make the game better? Then do it. That's brilliant. And that same ethos can be applied to all of the PlayStation Studios teams. Naughty Dog are an outlier with their vile crunch atmosphere and I'm hoping that's changing because they've got that spotlight on them because of it. But we'll have to wait and see with all of this. But people come first. People's health, people's rewards, people's ability to do their job without stress and anxiety always comes first. And I think that this particular acquisition will allow Bungie to do that because they can grow. They can take more time in less actual real world time because they've got more people to be able to do these things. But we'll see, we'll have to see. In the meantime guys, once again, I would like to thank you all very much for tuning in. Don't forget to do the usual YouTube thing so you've got your like button, you subscribe and your bell for notifications. There's a bunch of links in the description box below. We are 48% of the way to my 1000 subscribers goal. So please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you do, your name will appear in the description box of my videos for a while until the next person subscribes thereafter. Links to the Discord channels if you also want your name in the description box. And until next time, have yourselves an absolutely fantastic day and take care.